rolling y'all. Cool. I'm gonna do like a 30 second intro, and then we're just gonna jump right into it. Sounds cool. good. Sounds good. Here we go. In three, two, one. You're listening to Alleria Masterclass Podcast. This is episode number 47. What's going on, everybody? It's Brian Tripp. I'm here in beautiful Birmingham, Alabama. So excited you decided to join us today for another episode of the Masterclass Podcast, a real estate investing podcast. However, today we're going to be talking about a little bit of music and real estate combined. I've got Mr. Scott Register with me and Mr. Will. You got to help me with your last yeah, name. Yeah, Lockamy. That's right. Will Lockamy. I'm in the Birmingham Mountain Radio Studios. I'm so excited to be here. And if you guys have ever, if you've grew up in Birmingham, listening to probably 1077 The X, you've got to remember Reg's Coffee House, Mr. Reg himself. How's it going today? Good, man. Appreciate you having us. This has been, uh, we've been talking about doing this for a while, so it's nice to finally be in the same room together. For sure. And that's kind of how it goes when, when I try to schedule <laughs> podcasts. Is that's why I try to schedule as many as I can, because, you know, or there's always scheduling conflicts, but Reg, I specifically want to kind of ask you. You know, you've you've been here in Birmingham for how long? I've been in Birmingham for 48, going on 49 years, but doing radio here for 20, almost 21 years. 21 years in January. Take us back to the beginning. Take us back to the beginning, though, because I remember I, I moved to Birmingham in 1998. And I remember you so on 107. Right I, went, I went in the air in 1997. So. 1997. So I remember you from almost the beginning then. So yeah. is that was 1077? Was that your first? Yeah, that was where I first was asked to do a show. Uh, Dave Rossi was the program director there. And he was looking for someone who knew AAA music, adult album alternative music. And like my taste in music, decided to give me a show on Sundays. And, uh, you know, I didn't know I'd be on six weeks, much less almost 21 years so it's uh it's been a crazy ride but it's a testament to the music lovers in this town and their willingness to uh listen to stuff they hadn't heard before and and get turned on to new music take us reg take us through the progression of your career because it was 1077 and then what i can't remember exactly what year Man, it was they turned into 100.5 no no it was uh yeah it was 1077 in the beginning and that actually, it was actually 105.9, I believe, when we or 106.9. It was 106.9 before it was 107.7. And then, but, but I went on the air 107.7. And then it went to, when the X went, went uh, away, they put me on Soft Rock 94.5, which I like, totally didn't fit the station <laughs> at all. But the show paid for itself, so they were cool with keeping it on the air and then it went to live 100.5 and then it went away for a few months when live 100.5 went under and then it came back to life on Birmingham Mountain Radio which was in 2010 and uh, that's where we've been ever since yeah so that's a great segue tell us about and Will I want to get you involved here too tell us about Birmingham Mountain Radio where it came from like I mean obviously we've been you've been in existence for seven going on eight years so just kind of give us the evolution of Birmingham Mountain Radio. Yeah, I think uh, three friends over some beers decided uh, Birmingham needs good music again. They reached out to Reg, uh, brought him on board. My brother and I, they brought us on to do a show called Oh Brother, which is kind of a, just a talk show about about Birmingham. And, um, and the community just immediately latched on. It started internet only. Right, I remember and that. So for a while, it was just on the internet. But even then, was winning best radio station in town. And the year streaming year. numbers we were getting were just ridiculous. Maybe yeah. We, I mean, none of us... Kind of t like today when we get numbers back, none of us believe it. <laughs> wow. We're just we're like, yeah, okay, whatever. We don't we don't really pay attention to that stuff, and we it makes us nervous when we when we see that kind of stuff. But we you know we just come in here every day with keep our heads down and try to do what we do, and hopefully people enjoy listening to it. And it was nice when they came to us because it kind of coincided with what's going on in Birmingham right now and this whole new revival of sorts downtown and you know our station specifically hits downtown and over the mountain harder than anywhere else and that's where we've concentrated what we do and what we're uh talking about and interested in and it's been nice because we've kind of seen the station grow along with birmingham uh it's it's been a symbiotic relationship and that's always a good thing it was that's how it was with the x back in the day the x mm. hit during a real musical renaissance and birmingham was having uh, yeah, there was some new clubs and bands were coming through town that never come through town before. And the station was a, a tastemaker station. And Fox Six at the time was doing a ton of uh, music with us. And 
Magic Platter was out in Hoover selling all the records we were playing. And we're kind of back in that place now with even more venues than we had at the time. Yeah. With more people downtown, with Seasick Records coming around and really selling a lot of the artists we play. And, you know, it's, uh, it's, everything's cyclical, but this feels like one of the, the most important times in Birmingham in a long, long time. Yeah, so you, you mentioned the correlation between what happened then and what's happening now. Take us back to 1997, 1998. What was it? What was happening in Birmingham then for those that don't remember? And, and tell us why, um, even musically, um, you know, economically, socially, everything. Well, I, there was a people, uh, you know, my age, early 20s that were really interested in the city. And there were some really good clubs. Five Point Music Hall was doing great. You know, the Knicks always been around, it seems like. Zydeco was really popular back then and mm-hmm. still is. But back then, that was that was the place that, you know, my generation went to see a lot of music. I can just roll off show after show after show. The radio station was bringing bands to town that wouldn't normally stop through Birmingham because they were getting so much airplay here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, we were a tastemaker market, and that at the time that was a, a big term used by the record labels. You know, as far as bands breaking out of the area and, and influence a city had on music, and uh, we were one of a handful of tastemaker markets across the country. You know, the Oak Mountain Amphitheater. We, we did all those X fests out there, and you know, music was was drawing people to Birmingham. We had bands coming in all the time. You know, I can just remember bands staying at my house you know <laughs> they, they uh really loved Birmingham and you know, a lot of them still come around today and and consider Birmingham the launching pad for for their careers so you yeah. know it was just it was the perfect storm is the way I describe it and right now it, it feels different because it feels like this is more permanent you know back then it was like how long is this going to last these days, it's like this is the new Birmingham. This is why? not going anywhere. Why? Does, why do you? Why do you think I it feels know. that way? I don't know. I just think it wasn't as perfect a storm in the late '90s as we thought it was. Right now, you know, maybe it's at the time, urban renewal wasn't really a term you heard much of. For and sure. This is going on around the country right now. There's downtown areas and cities across the country that have been dormant for, for sure. years that suddenly are alive. And, you know, I just think people have headed back towards the city and out of the suburbs and you know and i'm a suburbanite man my kids go to school in the suburbs i live in the suburbs but i work downtown i spend a majority of my time downtown and i tell folks in the suburbs all the time that you know a city's only as strong as its heart and you know you think the suburbs can survive without the downtown area you're completely wrong so yeah so nothing makes me happier than like when i'm at railroad park and i see families from south of town north of town east west of town hanging out in downtown you know, going to ball games you know see a region filled for sure filled up seeing the the breweries full on a sunday afternoon you know it's a it's a testament to to the city and and to where we're headed will how do you see that how do you see that kind of picture yeah i think birmingham finally had a voice uh, and i don't mean just this radio station but like Yellowhammer creative started making shirts you know that said glad to have you in Birmingham people were wearing it on their sleeve they're really proud of the town Instagram yeah. Beham started and this yep. Instagram account that like became one of the largest in the country at the time and so all of a sudden there was pride and it was people were showing their pride and yeah. so I think that was just a change in attitude at the same time when people were starting to invest and so you saw all these buildings going up downtown I was like wait who, who's gonna go who's gonna live in those condos right but turns out people are and so I think it's just all going to come together at the right time. Reg, is that kind of what you were talking about where you said things are a little bit different? They seem a little bit more permanent now because you see real estate, you see people building, you see um, old, you know, even the lyric, you know, these old buildings that have been dormant for years and years and now they're being refurbished and revitalized. And that really wasn't the case in the late 90s. Complete urban renewal, I guess, is the best way to put it. Back in the in the mid to late 90s, you saw spots you'd see something pop up and you know but it wasn't widespread now you drive downtown and every corner is under renovation and there's you know we had we've had great restaurants since frank stitt brought highlands to birmingham and decade after decade it just has grown and grown and now we have a food scene that per capita i'll put up against anybody in the country you know and and to have those restaurants all over downtown. Yeah, I remember when, when Chris DuPont moved Cafe DuPont to 20th Street downtown mm-hmm. from Springville. And it was like, wow, that is gutsy. Because at the time, there was nothing down there. 
and he weathered the storm and now he's surrounded by great restaurants and right. bars and venues and you know it's a uh, that was one of the the beginning flashes of light that I saw you know it's like okay if people take their take chances and if if it's good enough you know if you've got a product that people want they're going to they're going to yeah. come you know and the city has done a great job of incentivizing people to come downtown you know and over the years i think we've people got tired of being told they couldn't do stuff so they sure. finally was like you know what we're going to do it with or without you so just get out of our way and watch us go so reg i th- i think your voice is, a, is an important voice here in birmingham i mean you're talking about being on the radio in some capacity for over 20 years that that's a really important voice in our town yeah you know at the end of the day i'm just a guy that plays music man i mean that's, right. that, that's all i am <laughs> you know i uh i'm just lucky that people have have stuck around for 20 years wanting to hear new music and wanting to hear you know what i thought was up and coming and and you know i i don't i don't take it for granted because i've been there you go can go away overnight you know so as far as a voice when it comes to music I, i'm just a conduit I, I connect, for sure i connect listeners to artists and that's i don't ever look at it anymore anymore now you know I, I'm not a brain surgeon, you know. So. You're, it, it's, you're a conduit, but but without that conduit, you know, some of that, you know, some of those, it doesn't exist. You know, the relationship with the music doesn't exist. Don't you agree, Will? Yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. Um, it's, he hates me. What are you talking well, about? Well, I can't stand it personally, but <laughs> but as a community, <laughs> no, it's been fun for me. Because Reg and I have been friends now, you know, six, seven years. But to see over the last year as we've done the show together, just uh, the way that the community connects with Reg. Yeah. It's, it's been pretty wild to see. It's so, same with Will. I mean, he's from a radio family. His father, Bob, was one of the originators around here, you know, for years. Uh, he was with Paul Feinbaum way back in the day before anybody knew who Paul Feinbaum was and really helped Paul get going in their late 80s, early 90s. And, uh, you know, Will was the youngest DJ ever in Birmingham at I-95, yeah, which was like back in the day when there were only a few stations. There was like the rock station, I guess. I ninety five. This is in the eighties. I ninety five was an aging, iconic Birmingham. I was about to say, wow, I don't, I don't remember it aging. I remember Rock ninety nine. Iconic Birmingham station. I ninety five. Uh, some of the best DJs, Mark and Brian, who went on to superstar fame in Los Angeles, were discovered on I ninety five. Morning, yeah. wow. And Jimbo Wood, who was a staple. He's up in Huntsville now, but he was a uh, you know, you talk Birmingham radio, it was, it was Jimbo Wood. Well, Will Lockamy was on that same station with Jimbo and Mark and Brian when he was a, a, little curly a toddler. Yeah. <laughs> so, no Will, give us give us the background. Tell us who you are, where you, obviously, you the, with the radio background. Yeah. Tell, bo- us, tell us who you are. Yeah, so born and raised here in town, uh, up in Hoover in Bluff Park, and I actually live back up there now. Um, but that was it. I mean, did like some radio stuff when I was a kid and then was a musician for years and so traveled as a, a touring drummer and really just needed to settle down at that point after that was done and had kids and what was I going to do? And so I just thought, you know, I enjoyed radio. That's kind of a bat. There was background there. And so my brother and I started a podcast, uh, 10 minutes a day and we would, it wasn't local at all. I mean, it was just about anything and everything. And it started doing well enough to where we got a TV gig from it. And luckily Birmingham Mountain Radio reached out when they were getting started, Jeff Clanton, did and so we moved from the podcast to BMR and then continued doing sports TV stuff and so it's man it's right place right time been really yeah. lucky so what year would that have been so we started the podcast in 08 um, started with Birmingham Mountain Radio at the end of 2010 okay yeah. and and that's when Birmingham Mountain Radio started you, you I think you said earlier Will that it was just over some beers and stuff but how did it how did Birmingham Mountain Radio come to existence and and where Reg, what's what's the role that you guys actually play? <laughs> it literally was Jeff Clanton and Gino Pearson and Jeremy, Jeremy Harper. Harper getting together over beers, three guys over beers, mulling over the state of radio in Birmingham and what was missing that they thought they could fill the hole for. And you know, they, when they called me up, I went and met them for lunch and. You know, I'd been courted by a couple of folks in Birmingham since I'd gone off the air at Live 100.5, and I had my standard contract and was just like, you know, this is how I work, and if you can deal with that, great, and if you can't, oh well. So I slid my standard one-page contract over to them, and they looked at it for about a minute, and then they said, we can do this, and I said, 
Okay, well, let's talk. And by the end of that hour, I knew it was something that I was interested in being a part of and something that could make a difference in Birmingham. And, you know, here we are seven years later. Things are still as DIY as uh, you can get. I mean, we still consider ourselves a pirate radio station. Um, We keep the overhead low. And we do things the way we want to do things. I mean, you know, when we were looking for a signal, the big thing was, you know, we're not for sale. We're just, you know, we want to partner up with somebody, but we keep creative control. And yeah, thankfully summit came along eventually and said, well, Hey, we don't want to change anything you're doing and we don't want to own you. We just want to split profits with you and give you a signal so you can be on the FM and not just online. And you know, that's been working out for a few years now. Uh, similar for us, except I actually slid them a hundred dollars in the beginning instead of a contract, and I gave them a coupon <laughs> book for free back rubs and stuff. I was like, "If you'll take us, if yeah. you'll let me be on the radio, here you go, <laughs> there you go, whatever it takes, right? Yeah. Whatever yeah. it takes." Worked out. Now, I was going to ask because you know it takes a lot of money to start a radio station. Not if you're doing it on the internet, maybe there's there's low overhead, but it to takes actually less, but it still takes money, that's for sure. But to get it out and to get, I was going to ask you the progression there to get it projected out and to get an actual like channel. You you said you guys partnered up with yeah well at the time our streaming numbers were so strong and our advertising dollars we were out billing some FM stations so it only made sense if you put us on FM we can do even more so you know it, it just took the right group of people having a little bit of vision and seeing that we would be an asset if we were on FM I mean we were winning best radio station in town with a with a stream yeah, year after year in every, in every poll, you know, and we weren't out there like juicing the machine. We didn't really even talk about it that much, you know, and maybe a Facebook post here or a tweet here and people just, and we still, it still weirds us out, man. You know, we, it doesn't matter where we go. We hear, I listen every day, you know, and, and you guys are really important to, to what we, you know, what I, I, to my day and to what I do. And it, we come in here shaking our heads about it all the time. You know, I had my 20th anniversary concert last Wednesday night at the Alabama theater. And it's just, it's surreal, but, uh, you know, we love the city. We love music. We love what we do. And so we're lucky we got a place to do it. It's, it. Yeah. And it's just a testament to how important your voice is, because I think that you carry a lot of clout when you come in here and you're going to, you know, you're going to, be a part of something like this it it takes that it it, you couldn't just start this with anybody it's it's weird for us because we are very opinionated but we aren't the kind of people who like to shove our opinions down people's throats so you know we have to i bite my tongue a lot i know will does too because i'll start going on a tangent and then i'll be like man just back off but you know everybody's got their opinion and 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 the only thing i've I Ours is just I, more important. Yeah, yeah. Right. The only thing I know I do right, and thankfully I do something right, is I've got a knack for finding music. So, you know, it's a, yeah. it's a good thing that I have that because I don't know what I'd do with myself if I didn't. <laughs> well, that's it. That's all you need. So tell me, Reg, what's the future? What's the future look like for Birmingham Mountain Radio <laughs> and for you? I hope that the future is just the continuous growth of the station, you know, a larger signal so we can reach more people in a bigger area. You know, we're on four different signals right now we were on one in or three different signals we're on well if you count hd we're on five different signals we're on two in birmingham one in pelham two in tuscaloosa so you know we're we joke that we're taking over the state one signal at a time you know eventually it'll all add up to a hundred thousand watts there you go <laughs> uh, so you know you know i think it, it, we, we all be lying if we said we didn't want to have a a bigger signal so we could reach more people and, sure. and turn more people onto what we do. Yeah, and full disclosure, one of those signals is a bullhorn that we yeah, just have is. outside we stand the outside state. The corner so those people just come by. That's <laughs> it. Um, and, you know, hopefully the city will continue to grow, the station will continue to grow alongside it, and we'll be able to help promote what's going on in and around the city and, and all the great things that Birmingham has to offer that – you know, it never ceases to amaze me when people come to town who either haven't been here before. And, I, and I'll go back to the mid-90s, you know, working on city stages at the time and doing radio promotions for city stages and escorting artists around 
Birmingham and having them stop and say, wow, this city is not anything like I thought it was Yeah, because they've just seen what they've seen on the news for decades. And, you know, those generations were, heck, I was born in 1969. That stuff, everything that went on here, while very important, it's also important to keep moving forward. And so, you know, we're a generation that, that wants to see what's in front of us. You know, we remember what's behind us, but we don't make that what we hang the city's hat on. You know, it's it's important that it happened. And Birmingham's the the cradle of, you know, it's ground zero for, for the civil rights movement. And, you know, that's important. That brings people from around the world to Birmingham. And when they get here, you got to sell on what you got now so they come sure. back time and time again. And that's what we're seeing. We're seeing yeah. people come to town. I don't remember a time in my life where people would just take a vacation to Birmingham for the weekend. And now you see people doing it all the time because they read about it in the New York Times. They read about it in the Wall Street Journal. They read about it in Vanity Fair. They read about it in GQ. And they want to see what all the hubbub's about, you know? I just talked to a guy the other day who's from Florida, and he was buying a vacation home, and it was between a coastal town in North Carolina and Birmingham. They were looking at a house in Mount Laurel. That's crazy. And, and people, this, yeah. This blows it's my true. mind. I mean, we, we see people see people downtown all the time now that are here on vacation, just like yeah, as a right. getaway for the weekend. Like, yeah. oh, what? Huh? Because five years ago, that was unheard of. Completely unheard of. Yeah. I, I mean, five years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, you know, that's for a sure. new phenomenon. And it's something that it's a testament to everything, to everything that's been done here and changed here over the past few years. I mean, it's, you know, and like I said, it's going on. I mean, I love Nashville. I've been working in Nashville for a long, long time. And thinking back five years ago in Nashville to where downtown Nashville is now, Mm -hmm. it's crazy. It's like a totally different city. And, you know, I started going to Austin in the early nineties and the change downtown Austin had over the, the nineties into the early two thousands, it's totally different city. You know, what I like about the way Birmingham is changing is, is that a pace that the city can keep up with and it's not losing its identity where I, I feel like Austin and Nashville to a point lost some of its identity and or losing some of its identity. And, and you hear native Nashvilleans talk about it, mm-hmm. you know, um, it's not just me saying that it's other people coming to me and saying, yeah, it's not the same, you know? Um, and you can't fault change. I mean, you know, it's, it's progress and it's great for the city. The city's making a, a lot of money and people are moving there and you know i just want to see birmingham do it at a pace that it can keep up with yeah are we doing that where should we be investing brian and aren't you gonna tell <laughs> us at some point look i'm i'm not personally first of all can we get some money <laughs> oh my gosh we'll need the serious? money and i'm then... a podcast host and they think that i'm in here you know <laughs> and, and, and we work at birmingham just, mountain radio <laughs> i was gonna say my my friends that are podcast hosts make way more money than i do that's really the truth. oh yeah sure. uh, yeah mine too the ones that live out in la oh. well i'll tell you crazy. this i've turned down two advertisers so far uh, just to keep it completely ad free yeah. I'm, I'm a big I'm a big proponent and just giving out it. the content. I didn't take a paycheck for 10 years for Regis Coffee House because I didn't want anybody to have any influence on me. There and finally, go. they said, if you want to keep us to keep you on the air, we have to pay you as an employee. We can't just have you showing up at the station and doing a show. <laughs> so there you go. that was the beginning of the end. <laughs> Reg, Will, Brian, can't thank you guys enough for oh, man, letting me come fun. in here. Yeah, appreciate it. I appreciate the insight um, to what you guys are up to. And so go check out, where can guys listen to you? Where can people listen to you guys? 107.3 FM Birmingham, 97.5 FM Tuscaloosa, 92.3 FM Pelham, and online, bhammountainradio.com. Or just right outside the door of the studio. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what, what times are, are you guys on specifically? We're on 6 to 10 a.m. Monday through Friday. Will's show with his brother Reed is on Thursdays from 7 to 9 p.m. It's Oh Brother Radio. And Reg's Coffee House is on Sunday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. So any day but Saturday, you yeah. can catch, pretty much catch us. We'll, we'll be sleeping on Saturdays. Try to at least. Sleep. Yeah. There you go. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thanks, Brian. All right. That's it. Thank you guys. Appreciate you talking to us. Yeah.